Jordan Belford, The Way of the Wolf, author, joins us now. All right, Jordan. Uh, so you're out there. You're warning folks uh, about Bitcoin, essentially. And, you know, there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, Bitcoin fans out there. I mean, uh, there's almost a cult like following. And you and to a degree, you can understand why people have lost confidence in governments around the world. People have lost faith in fiat currencies. Uh, remember, our crisis, we printed $5 trillion worth out of thin air. And people like the idea of having a currency that they control and that no one else can control. So you understand where that's coming from. And by the way, what if it does go to 50000 or 100000 or a million? What do you tell people who may not have gotten into it because of your warnings? First of all, I, I don't think that you're correct in what you say. I disagree with that. I don't think that people are getting into it because they have a dislike for fiat currencies or they're scared of the governments. It's just it's typically not wanting to miss out right now on something that's going up It's a bubble. It has nothing to do with the technical factors. The early people that were idealistic and were thinking about, you know, an alternative to money, they were on that train of thought, but not the people now who were driving it up. So that's not what's going on well, right now. Well, we can disagree on that because, goes, because I can tell you, my yeah. son just opened an account a couple months ago, all of his friends did, but they've done their research and they like the idea that there will only be 21 million mined and they like the libertarian but that's argument true, about it's, it. That's not true, I understand it's not correct, though. See, this, this, this idea of scarcity with Bitcoin is completely false because what happens when you have uh, something like uh, cryptocurrencies, they all trade in one giant basket. So while there might be only 21 million Bitcoin, every time they create a new cryptocurrency, there's more cryptocurrency on the market. There's no limit to the amount of cryptocurrency. It's getting bigger every single day. There is no scarcity. It's, there's no value. It's a bubble. And I promise you, and you're right, it could go to 50,000. It could go to 100,000. But I, I'm certain that at the end of the day, it will end up close to zero. That's the bottom line. All right, Jordan, I got one for you also. Another one, uh, Gary Kalbaum from Kalbaum Capital Management. He's their president there. He actually compared Bitcoin to a highlighter. <laughs> Roll tape. The best way I could explain it, I have in my hands here the bit highlighter. Uh, <laughs> it, it is worth more than a Bitcoin. And of course, if somebody paid $15,000 for it, Wall Street would start trading it. The uh, uh, futures exchanges would have you trading it also. And you'll have companies coming out. Instead of changing their name to Riot Blockchain, it would be Riot Highlighter. Uh, that's the nature of this beast. So essentially, Jordan, what he's describing, and they, and that's it. <laughs> right? He's describing what, what they call the greater fool theory. But but you could also exactly. argue, you could also that really argue well. though, <laughs> that the painting that was sold a month ago for four hundred fifty million dollars, uh, intrinsically, it's worth a buck fifty. The canvas and the paint, or or, or gold. There's only or, one. Or, there's or, only or, one of that painting or, though. Well, what about there's gold? Only one, though, that which has been an amazing store of value for centuries. Things like that. I mean, that are still mined actively. So. It, again, I get, listen, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not in it, I've never bought it, I, and my son asked me to four years ago, but I will say, though, to, to dismiss it out of hand because it's, it's not a currency that's printed up by government and, and it doesn't have the full faith and credit of some government behind it, that could be folly also, no? Let me, let me put it this way. So you're, what you're, I think, confusing here is... Bitcoin versus blockchain technology. Number one, I don't think Bitcoin itself is a scam. That's not the problem. The problem is, is that by its very nature, it attracts people in there that are manipulating it. It's set up to be manipulated. It's a massive viral campaign going around the world right now with people who know nothing, like your son, probably a smart kid. He has not been through all the bubbles. He doesn't know what's going sure. on. This, this is what, listen, I broke some laws, and, and I'll tell you this. This is exactly what is going on right now. In Bitcoin, in these cryptocurrencies, people are essentially taking these basically worthless instruments and pumping it up with a story that it's the next great thing. This is never going to be a mainstream currency. It's not going to be. There's too right, many problems right. with Bitcoin. Well, also, one day there will be, by the way, there will be a blockchain currency. It'll be, I'm sure, sponsored by the governments and be approved. The government, you think the U.S. government is going to allow there to be some just freedom of currency out there that could, you know, massive money laundering, I don't lose disagree. all the, the control? Jordan, it's, Jordan, it won't I don't, happen. I don't, I, don't, I don't disagree with you on that. And I, and I know there's a lot of bubbles and scams out there. Ultimately, there might, might be one. I do real quick. Tell me to wrap real quick, though. That dance scene with Leonardo DiCaprio, could you really dance like that back in the day? <laughs> no. no. I wish I could, by the way, but Leo, listen, Leo's <laughs> awesome. He did a great job, and that whole thing he did, I don't know how he did it, but it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Jordan Belford, thank you very much. Appreciate it.